Friends, we gather in prayer as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Today we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We call to mind our sins and we ask for mercy and pardon. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God Almighty have mercy upon us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the courage to follow Christ. Gracious God in heaven, the love of your Son led him to accept the suffering of the cross, that his brothers and sisters might glory in your life. Change our selfishness into self-giving. Help us to embrace the world you have given us, that we may transform the darkness of its pain into the life and joy of Easter. These things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the, With the Lord, Lord, there is mercy and fullness, fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With, With the, the Lord, Lord, there is mercy and fullness, fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the, with the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the, with the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With, with the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, on the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong in, to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to you, the word of God, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O man of God, O Jesus Christ. We do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Glory to you, O word of God, O Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O word of God, O Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness will, is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took the stone away, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may, they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the church say amen. Amen again. We have some fascinating readings today on this fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, beginning from the first reading. I will open your graves and have you rise, O my people. Again, he says it, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, you will know that I am your God. What I find interesting in that is that Ezekiel is not prophesying to a people that are dead. Ezekiel is prophesying to a people that are fully alive. But are they? And that is the question that we want to answer on this fifth Sunday of Lent. I will have you rise from your graves, O my people. And when I rise you from the graves, you will know that I am God. Sometimes we may seem to be alive. 
For the people of Israel whom Ezekiel is prophesying for today, they are in Babylon, and they are slaves in Babylon. They are walking around without any joy, without any hope. And they are walking around like as if they were dead. So today, the prophet comes to them and says to them that God will raise them from their dead situations. It reminds me of that wonderful, beautiful passage that Jesus says, that I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. The question for us today is, how alive are you? How alive am I? And we can also go and ask, what are the situations of death that sometimes surround us that we may be alive, but we are not joyful enough or we are not hopeful enough because of the things that are going on in our lives, because of the trials and tribulations that we find ourselves in, we look or we seem to be dead. I had a discussion once with a young lady uh, who was going through a very, very rough time. She um, was the first one in her family and the only one in her family to ever go through a divorce. And it was a very, very difficult divorce. And she used an expression that was impressed upon me. She said to me, I was suffocating in that marriage. I was suffocating. And I was like, that is a very interesting way of putting it. Uh, and she said, everybody loved him, but nobody saw my bruises. And after I got away from that marriage, I, could, I had to leave Luvu because wherever I was going, it seemed as if I had the word divorce on my forehead. I was walking around, but I was not alive. I had to go out of town and come back into town after years. That's a situation of death. Today, as we meditate upon these scriptures, we want to talk to those people who are suffocating. Suffocating maybe because you are in a difficult relationship. Suffocating maybe because you struggle with drugs and alcohol, or you know somebody who struggles with drugs and alcohol. To all, the, all of us who go through these difficult moments, we want to hear the words of the prophet, I will have you rise from your grave. I also like um, what God says to Moses when, Moses, when God appears to Moses on the burning bush. He says, you know, take off your shoes. For the ground upon which you stand is holy ground. So wherever you are, whether you feel yourself suffocating or not, there are seeds of holiness there. And we can start building our lives from that moment and hearing God's word. Today's gospel passage, another very fascinating reading, and um, for the interest of time, I will go to the end of the passage. I love what Jesus does in today's gospel passage. You know, he goes, of course, and he raises Lazarus from the dead. But there's something that happens in this passage that has come alive for me in my life. When Jesus calls out to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. The scripture says, the dead man came out with bands around his head and hands tied together. And Jesus then gives a directive. Unbind him and let him go. What is missing for us in this passage is our, the understanding back then of death. They believed that after three days, the soul of the person was still hovering around the body. But the fourth day, they're not only dead, they are very dead. So Lazarus is very dead, one. Second thing that happens is if you touch a dead body, which is very dead, you become unclean. So I find it interesting that Jesus doesn't go over there and begins to unwrap Lazarus. He instead asks the people around and asks them, are you willing to be unclean so that this person who was very dead becomes alive? And what I hear from that is, how willing am I to touch the brokenness of somebody else? 
um, this preaches uh, so much for me because as I've, I've shared this story with you uh, several years ago when I left the Archdiocese. Uh, I don't know if there was a directive from someone that uh, my brother priest should not talk to me. I don't know. But it felt as if um, they were asked not to talk to me. And I remember dying inside. Because when you grow up in the system, uh, you have your brother priest, that's all you know. And I remember dying inside of loneliness. Then one day, the phone rang, and it was Father Pablo Hernandez. Uh, I went to seminary with him. He's a priest of the Archdiocese. He said, hey, I'm going to swing by your house. I said, oh, Lord, don't come over here. They will kill you. But Pablo came. He sat down, and we had tea. And we just talked. In that moment, I felt as if just that reaching out, him reaching out, I felt as if he was unbinding me and letting me go. That same feeling happens every time we walk into this, into this space. Uh, every time we come to Rabuni, I feel as if the community here has the courage to say, I will and bind you, and I will not mind the stench. I feel the call of the Spirit in this moment is to find people who are courageous enough to say, I'll be the first one to touch the uncleanness of the other. I'll be the first one to say, well, maybe to die with this other person. Because when Jesus said, unbind him and let him go, I'm sure people are looking around and wondering who is going to be the first to lay a hand on Lazarus. Because Lazarus may be alive, but Lazarus is still unclean. And to touch Lazarus is to touch the unclean. And that is what church is all about. In church, we learn to touch the unclean because we know that we are, in, we are together in all of this. We become unclean so that others may have life. We touch the brokenness of others. And in touching the brokenness of others, something actually beautiful begins to happen. We become fully alive. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. When, when you used to go to the nursing home, you go to the nursing home, you visit with somebody, you can't go there now, uh, but, but when we used to go there, you become alive when you touch the brokenness of another. Just pray during this Eucharist on this fifth Sunday of Lent that we become the church that has the courage to touch, to roll the stone away, and to touch the uncleanness of others so that they may have life, and in turn, we have life. And together we lift up our prayers, knowing that our God hears us when we pray. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering at this time, longing for new life, may they find healing and peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our health care workers, first responders, farmers, migrants, truck drivers, grocery workers, and all others serving our needs at this time, we pray. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer that all people might continue to find new life and the warmth of our community's embrace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us to newness of life with God, we especially remember Lois and Ed Asherman, for whom this Mass is offered. For these, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to receive these prayers that we make in faith through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be Lord God of all creation, through your goodness you have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be Lord God of all creation, through your goodness you have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humbled and contrite hearts. Lord God, wash away our iniquities and cleanse us all from all our sins. And pray, church, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Lord, by the grace of this sacrifice, may we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. You ask us to express our thanks by self denial. We are to master our sinfulness and conquer our pride. We are to show those in need your goodness to ourselves. Now, with the saints and the angels, we praise you forever as we sing. God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death that he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Please do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and all the bishops and clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone from this light. In baptism, they died with Christ. May they also share his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on all of us. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you, union with them, and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ. And together we say, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And together we pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from everything that is evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy blood and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us depart from you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, by this sacrifice, may we always remain one with your Son, Jesus Christ, whose body and blood we share. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, protect your people always, that we may be free from every evil and serve you with all our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon us and remain with us always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us one to the tombs I went to more the hope I thought was gone here among you I awoke to unexpected dawn I have fixed my eyes on your ears Jerusalem my destiny though I cannot see the end for me I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone.